Okay, let's bring in the 32nd board. Hot topics within the sport. There's so much talk about this current points race with Eli Tomac and Cooper Webb. Now we're starting to miss the milestones. Hey, Eli Tomac, he's now tied for second all time at Supercross, Brandon Daniel. Yeah, and he's playing with these guys' emotions. He, I feel like he hung Ricky out to dry for weeks and weeks and just dramatized it. And James was like, oh, man, come on, just get right through me. And he kind of did the same thing. thing. He waited. Now he ties it up. So the question is, does he blow past it now, or does James have to sit there and deal with this week after week? And, uh, Jason, it was cool to actually hear from James as he acknowledges what Eli is doing, but, of course, puts the James Stewart twist and fun on it. E.T., congratulations from number 50. 50, you tied, J.S.? You tied me. You're going to hopefully, like, go ahead and do it. Like, are you going to get another one? You got a week, a week before you get it. But congratulations from here. Bubba's world seems like every time you win, you're breaking records. Next time you win, you'll be breaking a record. So congratulations. Welcome to the 50 Club, son. Hit it for him, Cole. Suntan, next on fire. Of course, uh, James, in his way, makes it entertaining. And Weege, if he's going to pass James's record, he will do it in Glendale at a triple crown where statistically that'd be his best odds. Okay, let's talk about the wildness, though, that is triple crowns. You teased it on the top of the show. Tied for points is good enough, but we have very little data on any of the Triple Crowns, I feel, this year showing that anyone has an advantage or disadvantage. It has been all over the map in the previous runs in 23. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from the outside looking in, Tomac's your best statistically, but this season alone, Sexton won Anaheim, too. Uh, Webb won Arlington, and then you go back even in deeper history, Ken Roxon has swept a Triple Crown where? At Glendale. Uh, Anderson's won some Triple Crown races this year. Justin Barsh has been super fast all year. So as much as it may feel like a Eli Tomac racetrack win, like it should be easy, I feel the same way I felt every single race this year, Weege, which is I have multiple reasons to believe multiple people can win. And the Triple Crown is probably the reason for that coming into Glendale. The other thing is the 250 class. We already know where that is. That's Jet Lawrence. We'll talk about his Triple Crown problems later. But let's just talk about a little break. When he got to go on a big bike and he spoke about it at Seattle, what that experience was like. Bike was great. It was uh, it was funny on the 450. I think uh, at Dayton, I was very I was very close to actually going racing and and I was I was excited, but I ended up testing from Monday all the way through the Thursday on the bike. So I was pretty, and they're all from like 10 to 5 days where the sunset would go down. So it was uh, long days. It was trying stuff, seeing what works with it, and kind of. Just for more so my sake of thing of learning the 450, learning its character and that stuff. And it was just, uh, I was still wanted to do press day in that, but my dad's ended up just kind of pulling the pin, just going, no, you, you rode all week and uh, long, hard hours. So it was just kind of more so just, you know, just take the weekend off, have fun. Do you love how the parents, and I heard the mom, by the way, weighed in that she didn't want him to race Daytona either. Do you love how the parents still have this much influence over Jet Lawrence? Well, I feel I've done a pretty good job to this point, so maybe let them keep running the show. I don't know. It's been pretty good over there. Jason, last week, uh, during the off time, of course, I run into you. In Southern yep. California, of all places, KTM launched their new headquarters and their new race shop, and you got a chance to tour the entire thing. You got a chance to talk a little bit back and forth, but what were your thoughts overall walking into the new headquarters of KTM? Well, the race shop is unbelievable, and everyone was in their place. Each team, each discipline has their office and their room. The only person I didn't see perched where he should be is you as the amateur team manager. Instead, they had you greeting people in the front, along with this Roger DeCoster guy. But the overall investment here is $53 million to build this campus. $53 million. That is a sign not just for the peer mobility, the parent company of KTM, but a sign to me of the whole industry, health, and investment in the future. Yeah, sports in good spot. If you look at the numbers in the stadiums and on television and the investments by the manufacturers and companies, the sport is in a great position. And if you're Justin Barsha, you're probably in a great position too, Weege. Uh, hearing that he's probably going to lock this deal down with Gas Gas pretty soon, we assume that's going to happen. And that's off the back of like incredible, incredible racing over the last three or four rounds. Another rider who could win the Triple Crown if he can get a start because the aggression, the speed, it's been right there with the best. Yeah, actually, the only thing he doesn't have this year is the starts, which is normally one of his great assets. If he can finally solve that, could be good for a triple crown. A couple riders that don't need help with the starts. How about Seattle, the privateer power? Hunter Yoder on the Hartzilla PRMX machine, nailing starts all day long in the 250. And the start master, tank master KTM stock bike, Kevin Moran's nailing the whole shot and actually repassing 
Chase Sexton on the first lap of the main. Well, that was the best part for Moran's was you actually got passed in the second quarter by the guy who is the known fastest guy in the class that you know is going to get you and he's going to pull away. Nah, you're just going to cut him off in the next corner and lead a little longer, get to the finish line, and then go over the berm. I think it was the coolest thing ever for Moran's. And then for Yoder, his heat race was a good start too. So that wasn't just a one-off good start. There's a there's a trend over there with Hunter Yoder. So for those two privateers, getting that TV time, getting out front, doing it in the way that they can, which is getting the starts, uh, was huge for them. And while that was an opportunity for them, there is a third championship waiting at the end of this thing, Jason, between Eli Tomac and Cooper Webb. Two-time champions, both in their own right, but that third one, it's right there with six to go, and they're tied up. Yeah, and it's what we wanted to see, right? Because the last four seasons, they've split two titles between them. But I feel like you could easily point to each had a bad year while the other had a good year, and there's so much respect. We know Cooper Webb likes to play mind games. He gave the finger guns at Sexton and threw a little shade at him in the press conference in Seattle. Yeah, it was, it was a cool deal, and um, you know, it was one of those things that maybe make him get out of out of whack and lose focus, and seems like it maybe worked. I think they know at this point they're veterans. They can't get in each other's heads. There's so much mutual respect from everybody watching and then those two to each other. I think that just heightens this. They're two legends already. So there's no chance Webb tries that stuff on Eli? Because oh, he'll try. It worked. It's worked. I, I do remember when we went to the uh, the seven race swing in Salt Lake two years ago, he said, yeah, I'm trying. It's just not working, but I'm going to keep trying to get in this dude's head. So that would actually be pretty fun to watch, at least the attempt by Webb. But that's the thing. I mean, nobody has this steely-eyed ice look like Tomac these days. It's hard to get inside any of his thoughts. If you try to get in, he in hit his head, you might end up getting in your own. So that, that's a dangerous game to play, uh, which is going to make these final six that much more fun. Okay, let's finish up 30 board here. The 250 points, we bring this up as not every week. The Lawrence brothers have made mincemeat of the competition points-wise, so not much of a threat here coming into Glendale, Daniel. No, I think there's still exciting 250 action coming. There's a Futures main event coming this weekend, so there's a lot to be excited for. We're just talking about the points itself, and Jet lo looks pretty indestructible at this point. The points lead's pretty healthy. Looks like he's going to win another one, but at the same time, Jason... There's these triple crown things that Jet just can't do. And all I, I'm just going to ask you this. If he wins the first two races of the triple crown and he's on the gate for the third one, knowing this is the last time I will ever do a 250 triple crown again in my life, will he be feeling the pressure? Because those races have been weird for him. And uh, I, I can imagine that third one being extra spicy when it comes to pressure. Yeah, I, I think it will. And I think it will make a difference. That's the fun thing about Jet. He's almost perfect. But we bring up sometimes that he's the Travis Pastrana of this generation where he's got that little extra something special. I even feel sometimes when Jet messes up, even that is in a pretty spectacular fashion. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes 1-1 and then something goes wild in the third one and we can talk about this. And the other thing, by the way, if it weren't for Triple Crowns, we'd be looking at the Lawrence brothers having won every 250 race this year. So that's the not list points wise, but they've been pretty darn hot. Time to wrap up this episode of SMX Insider. We're all headed to Glendale here just outside of Phoenix. I'll be part of Race Day Live. I'll be announcing with the floor. Daniel, you're up in the TV booth. 4.30 Eastern time, Race Day Live begins and 10 o'clock Eastern. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.